Hey everyone, want to give a quick shout out to Brent Denewer from Vintage Motor Coach Magazine. Brent reached out to me and sent me a few copies of their magazine and I am really loving this. If you're a bus nut, which I would hope you are watching this channel, be sure to get your own subscription by visiting VintageMotorCoach.com. I'll post a link down in the description box below. Definitely go check it out. Thanks Brent, really appreciate it man. Let's roll that intro so we can get started with today's topic. Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Being a motor coach operator in the US means traveling to all kinds of different places all over the country. And when you get there, you typically wait for your passengers or group to do what they need to do and then you bring them back. Sometimes it's a matter of hours and sometimes it's a matter of days, which means on some trips, motor coach operators tend to have a lot of downtime. But one of my favorite things to do when off duty in a city far, far away is to explore the local food scene. Now, there's only one factor that adds a bit of a challenge for exploring. All you have as far as means of personal transportation is a 45 foot motor coach. With that said, drive throughs are kind of out of the question. And if it's a day trip and you don't have a lot of downtime, restaurants tend to get a bit confused when you call them and ask them to deliver to a coach bus. Although some have and I've tipped them really well. Now, when I find a restaurant that I just have to try out, I take notes on several criteria for future bus visits. Now, this may come in handy if you're traveling around in an RV as well. So those of you RVers out there, pay attention. The first criteria is, does this place have bus friendly parking? A very important factor when all you have to get yourself around is a 45 foot long vehicle. A thought that many who have never driven a large commercial vehicle before take for granted when searching for a place to eat. The second criteria is how group friendly is the establishment. Many times the passengers I drive will ask me for advice on good places to stop and eat. And if it so happens to be a place that I like to eat at myself, that's just an added bonus to my day. But with a group of 30 to 50 passengers, you kind of want to make sure that the restaurant is equipped to handle that many people at one time and that you won't be stuck there for hours as their staff tries to fill the orders. This could lead to the group being upset with your recommendation as well as you getting home late that night. The third criteria is the quality of food. This, of course, is a key factor in my decision to visit any restaurant. If it's a food that I have never tried before and it looks good, it's a Klingon delicacy. Hippias claw. This is heart of targ. This, of course, is gog. Lack of bus parking will usually not deter me from trying to get my bus somewhere where I can pay a visit to the establishment. There's always the option of taking an Uber if time permits. And finally, the last criteria is the bang for your buck. Although most companies do offer food per diems for trips, those per diems are not enough to cover certain menu prices. So making sure you get the right bang for your buck is an important factor. So today we're gonna use these four factors that I just listed and go over four of my all time favorite restaurants that I visited while behind the wheel of a motor coach. Right off of Interstate 24 in Chattanooga, Tennessee is a cozy little barbecue joint called Sugar's Rib. Sitting atop of a small mountainside, this place offers a great view along with the delicious barbecue. Sugar's Ribs was voted one of the top barbecue roadside spots in America by Men's Journal. Not really sure what that is, but I can definitely say for sure that those men knew what good barbecue is to put in their journal. When it comes to bus friendly parking, I'm gonna give this place a five out of 10. If you're bringing a motor coach or an RV here, you can't really park in their parking lot. There's just simply not enough space. There is, however, street side parking on the little access road that this restaurant is located off of that isn't really designated as street side parking. This means two things. Cars won't usually be parked here because it's not really designated as parking. However, if you should decide to park your 45 foot motor coach here to grab some delicious barbecue, no one's gonna really care. The only downside to parking on the side of the street here is you're going to have to find a place to turn your bus around first so that you're facing outwards and on the right side of the street. Now, when I went to Sugar's Ribs, I was in a three bus convoy and we were all in 35 foot Temsas on this trip. We managed to fit all three 35 foot Temsas here without any problems during the lunch hour. 
The parking lot was full, but the street side was wide open. Now for being group friendly, Sugar's Rib is gonna get a five out of 10. The people here are very friendly, but when it comes to large groups of 30 or more, which is typically what a coach bus is holding, you're gonna have a hard time keeping this meal stop under an hour. I didn't see a lot of places to sit for large parties. For the most part, the food is mostly already prepared and comes out pretty fast. Ordering your food is done through a pay line as soon as you enter, so it's gonna take you a little while to order if you take your passengers here with you. Food-wise, I'm gonna give Sugar's Rib a nine out of 10. The ribs I got were very flavorful and juicy, even without the sauce. When it came to sauces, there were six to choose from. Classic, sweet and goopy, mustard, hot lips, clearly hot, and Carolina Red. As far as bang for the buck, I'm gonna give Sugar's Ribs an eight out of 10. Lots of food, big portion sizes. The menu has a lot of entrees, sides, and desserts to choose from. And my favorite here were the ribs, of course. Oh, and the fire-grilled leeks were awesome as well. Definitely get you some of that when you visit this place. About 10 miles west of Interstate 57 in the little Amish town of Arthur, Illinois, lives one of the many Amish communities here in the United States. Now, Arthur, Illinois is a place in the middle of nowhere, but one would be surprised how many motor coaches frequent this little town with horses and buggies accounting for the majority of the street traffic. I must have jumped that 50 times. Scared the hell out of me each time. Those who live in the tech-filled cities tend to find the Amish who avoids modern day technologies a bit of a tourist attraction for their old school way of life. A motor coach operator arriving in Arthur, Illinois with an appetite, wondering how he or she is gonna find a place to eat in a community that doesn't use electricity would be pleasantly surprised actually. Not everyone living in Arthur is Amish and their eating establishments does have electricity. Food wise, there are definitely some real hidden gems to explore here. The Amish are known for making beautiful and quality wood crafts from furniture to houses to horse carriages. Yes, that's right. Most Amish folk travel by horse and buggy instead of the automobile. It's like traveling through time when you visit one of these places. But one other thing the Amish are known for are their delicious, heartwarming, soul-soothing home-cooked meals. Yoder's Amish Buffet is definitely one of those places that you can eat your heart out. When it comes to bus-friendly parking, Yoder's gets a five out of 10. Now there is a large parking lot in front with more than enough room to maneuver a coach bus. However, this place is always packed and the large parking lot is rarely empty enough to find enough space to park a coach bus. Being in the rural countryside, there are a lot of street side parking that one can stick a motor coach. And being a close knit laid back community, no one is gonna call the parking police on you if you should leave your bus somewhere that's not blocking anyone. Group friendly wise, Yoder's gets a 10 out of 10. They have a huge size banquet hall that can accommodate hundreds of people at a time. And with their restaurant being a buffet style, all you can eat place with multiple food tables, no one's gonna be waiting long to chow down on their world famous fried chicken and their chicken and noodles. And if you call in ahead of time, the staff will definitely make sure that you and your entire bus full of passengers will feel comfortable and accommodated when you get here. Food wise, Yoder's Amish Buffet gets an eight out of 10. Their food is absolutely delicious and tastes like grandma's cooking. Well, not my grandma, but a more Western grandma. Now I gave it an eight out of 10 because it is a buffet and they do have to cook their food in large quantities, which kind of takes away a little from the quality, but just a little bit. But folks, don't get me wrong because an eight out of 10 is still amazing. And if the buffet is not your thing, they also do offer off the menu items. Now I've always gotten the buffet, so I can't speak to what their off the menu items are like, but if I had to guess, I would say it's probably amazing just like their buffet. Now, as for getting your bang for the buck, about $14 gets you access to everything you want and as much as you want from their buffet tables. And if you leave hungry, there's no one really to blame but yourself. So I'm gonna give Yoder's a 10 out of 10 as far as bang for your buck. My favorite dish here is their homemade chicken and noodles and their kitchen made apple butter. Be sure to get some of that when you visit Yoder's. Anyone who has visited Chicago before definitely did not leave the city without seeing a motor coach. With two major international airports, O'Hare and Midway, along with Soldier Field, Navy Pier, Science and Industry Museum, the list goes on for why a motor coach operator will find him or herself sitting in Chicago wondering where to go to grab a bite to eat. Just off the Dan Ryan Expressway located southwest of the heart of downtown Chicago, 
Jim's Original is the epitome of old style Chicago street side sandwiches and hot dogs. Don't expect to get any frills and thrills here. Under the city skyline of the Windy City, you can order your choice of Vienna hot dogs, polar sausages, bone-in pork chop sandwiches, burgers, grilled chicken, and the delicious fish sandwiches, all topped with mounds of grilled onions. Every order here comes with fries, and if you tell them to hold the fries, you may get told to hold your tongue because in the hustle and bustle of downtown Chicago, these guys don't have time to customize your fancy orders. It's just not that kind of a place. Now with that said, this place is an all-time favorite of mine, so I'm really gonna try to be objective when it comes to giving this place a non-biased score. If you watch my vlog channel, I have included Jim's Original in at least four of my bus trip videos. Bus friendly wise, Jim's Original gets an eight out of 10. There aren't any designated bus parking areas, nor are there even car parking areas, but being Chicago and a sandwich stand for the working class, one will find many delivery trucks, construction vehicles, and even police and firemen pulling their vehicles alongside the curb to order their lunch here. With plenty of curb space available to leave large motor coaches, I usually leave my bus parked on James M. Rochford Street, right next to the building. I've been here all times of the day and night because they're open 24 hours. And I have never had a problem pulling up in a motor coach to get my hot dog and pork chop fix. Now the group friendly category is kind of a hard one here. You can't really eat inside their building, but to me, that's what adds to the Chicago feel of this place. Alongside Jim's original is a metal bench about chest high for customers to enjoy their Chicago style sandwiches on their feet underneath the Chicago city skyline. You're not really getting the Chicago experience unless you stop by Jim's and eat your Chicago hot dog on the bench standing alongside of the building. For those of you who are too faint hearted to enjoy your sandwich while inhaling diesel fumes, one always has the convenience of taking their meals back to their vehicles to enjoy. And the staff are usually really quick with their orders as well. With all that said, I think I would have to give Jim's original a five out of 10 for being group friendly. If your passengers don't mind eating their meals outside of your coach, this place can get large crowds through in short order. However, if you don't want your coach bus smelling like grilled onions and fries, and your group is expecting table service, then perhaps Jim's original isn't the best place to take them. Now, when it comes to the food itself, Jim's original's food is basically what you would expect from a very traditional urban city Chicago hot dog stand. It's simple American street sandwiches that are topped with mounds of grilled onions and fries. I'm talking about the hot dog with real casings that push back when you bite down on them, the type that snaps when you sink your teeth into them, and their bone-in pork chop sandwiches can be a dentist's gold mine if one bites down without care. But that to me is what makes this place awesome. So with all those parameters set, I'm gonna give Jim's Original a nine out of 10 for food quality. Talking about your bang for your buck here, over the years, especially being in a large city and those who are not used to large city prices, the simple sandwich stands prices are a bit higher than what one would expect for a hot dog and fries, which comes out to be $4.35 before tax. So I'm gonna have to give this place a six out of 10 for the value. Now, my all-time favorite meal at Jim's Original is... Can I get the two double dogs, extra onions, no mustard, and two pork chops, extra onion, no mustard? With Bush Stadium for baseball fans, along with many other attractions like the St. Louis Arch and the famous City Museum, St. Louis, Missouri is a common spot to see motor coaches from all over the U.S. In St. Louis, Missouri, with a stone's throw of the Illinois border is a place filled with history and character and the taste of Creole and Cajun cooking with the feel of being in New Orleans, except in Missouri. The Broadway Oyster Bar is probably one of the most interesting eating establishments I have ever been to as a motor coach operator. When it comes to being bus friendly, there practically isn't any place to park a bus here. With only street side parking available, which is occupied with cars most of the time, it's simply better to just take an Uber here if you're on an overnight or have a long layover. That's what I did when I took a group of kids to the city museum and had a six hour wait. So that's a one out of 10 when it comes to bus friendliness. Given that there are no options to park a bus, if one had to drop off a group here to eat, there is enough seating here that would be able to accommodate a coach full of passengers. The wait staff here are very professional and used to high traffic volumes here. Given that Bush Stadium is just down the street and on game day, this place is always packed. So with that said, I feel like Broadway Oyster Bar should have a nine out of 10 for being group friendly. As far as food quality goes, if you're a fan of Creole Cajun cooking, then this place is a must try. 
with a large selection of fresh seafood as well as many other items on the menu. And if you're not driving a coach, there's also a great alcohol selection, although I'm not a big drinker. There's no skimping when it comes to the explosion of flavors and variety here. For me, the hardest part was wanting to try a bit of everything without overordering, which I must admit, I tend to do quite often. But being as awesome as they are, the staff of Broadway Oyster Bar have already thought of that. They have what's called a sampler platter. Make no mistake, this is not the same sampler platter at some chain restaurant that gives you four chicken nuggets flavored with three different sauces and two types of french fries and what they call an egg roll and slap the name sampler platter on it. I usually made more palatable choices. This sampler platter will leave you enough for four people and allow you to taste the many different joys of the bayou. Is it bayou or bayou? Well, you know what I'm talking about. So with that said, I'm going to rate the food here a 10 out of 10 because Yes, it's just that awesome. Given that the food here does not arrive in frozen plastic bags sent here from a corporate office. Oh, yes, I hate this. It is revolting. But rather is cooked in house and that this is a pretty popular hangout place for the locals. One would think that this would be a pricey little establishment to eat at. Well, quite the contrary. The prices here are actually very reasonable. My all-time favorite menu item at the Broadway Oyster Bar, as mentioned before, is the sampler platter, which comes with a big bowl of gumbo, a plate of jambalaya, a bowl of red beans and rice loaded with andouille sausage, and a large plate of crawfish etouffee. Price comes out to be $20. Now don't quote me on this, but I think that also comes with soup and cornbread as well. So as far as bang for your buck, I'm gonna give this place a rocking 10 out of 10. Trust me folks, definitely worth the Uber ride. Well folks, after two extremely technical videos about the bus world, I figured a food one would be appropriate. I think this top four bus friendly food places segment will pop up again down the road because I have so many more food places that I've discovered from my motor coach trips that I would love to talk about here on this channel. Now I would love to hear from all of you motor coach operators out there down in the comment box below who have discovered hidden gems while wielding large land yachts looking for a place to satisfy their taste buds and appetites. And for those of you who are new to the industry, be sure to take notes from this video. It'll save you from having to scout out these places with a large 45 foot coach bus. And you can go there with confidence that you won't get stuck backing out of a tight parking lot somewhere while trying to find lunch. Speaking of lunch, if you want to treat me to lunch because you love my content so much, well, you can. Check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. For only a dollar a month, I'm a cheap date. You can support my channel by becoming a patron. Your proceeds will go towards me making better content for you guys here on this channel. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And remember, if you're watching this, then you are part of the motor coach world.